The monsters are here, my friends, and it's not this Muppet. That's not the monster. Uh, this is freaking nuts. And we've just got to fight back. This is this is going insane. It's funny watching the left eat itself, but if you think the left is going to eat itself and leave you alone, you're crazy. Um, a lot of people say, Josh, why do you get involved in political discussion on a financial planning YouTube? Because the country is at stake. It's nuts how far these people have gone. The Stalinist. It's scary. And compliance is silence. And I'm not going to comply. This is from the American Conservative with Rob Dreher. Now, Rob Dreher is far from a Trumpian. Let's just put it that way. I don't want to go so far as to say he's anti-Trump, but he is far from a Trumpian. So let's read this. A, uh, and this is <laughs> from a monster and a Muppet. Uh, Lexi Gruber left, ruined the life of a foolish woman at a party. All right, so let's read this. Uh, this is the front page of the Washington Post today. Blackface incident at Post Cartoonist 2018 party resurfaces amid protest. All right, so let's uh, let's read this. Uh, Tim, Tom Tolles, the Post liberal baby boomer cartoonist, has a big Halloween party every year in which the city's media elite gather. I can only imagine. Oh, can you, I imagine Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump are desperate to get there. And Joe Scarborough, uh, he finally threw in, and all of the right wing squishes. They say, I just want to be part of Tom Tolles' party. Uh, and so they give up their moral compass and they just jump with the left. All anyway, right, so let's read this. Uh, in 2018, a white woman showed up in a tasteless costume. Uh, a middle-aged white lady named Sue Schaefer wore a conservative business suit and a name tag that says, Hello, my name is Megan Kelly. Her face was entirely blackened with makeup. Kelly, we all remember what happened with Kelly. She was uh, minimizing blackface. And then Rod goes on to say, honestly, what kind of white idiot shows up in blackface these days? It's nuts. But that's what Schaefer did. And partygoers, Lexi Gruber, who is Puerto Rican, uh, and Lyric Prince, who is black, confronted Schaefer about it. Schaefer said it's a joke. But then Gruber and her friends moved inside the house, got drinks, and found themselves in a crowded living room. Prince, who is 6'1", easily spotted the woman in blackface and pointed her out to Gruber. What should we do? They approached Schaefer. Prince says she criticized Schaefer's makeup and told her, you look horrible. I, and then <laughs> Prince said in an interview that she was worried about being stereotyped as an angry black woman, woman that someone might call the police if she was too hostile toward Schaefer. I felt very unsafe talking to that person in the first place. I was in an environment that if it got heated, would decidedly not my be, be in my best interest. Another guest who spoke on the condition of anonymity to protect friendship says Schaefer laughed after Prince said her makeup was very ugly. Uh, Schaefer said she was laughing, but it was a nervous laugh, a sign of extreme discomfort. Anyway, Prince said, Prince is a six foot one black lady, said she looked very proud of herself as she was eliciting the kind of response that she'd be hoping for. So basically they're saying this lady Schaefer was hoping to ruffle feathers and she did. And Prince was uh, ticked off by it. Look, I don't have any problem with that. I don't. No problem at all. I Look, I don't know why I want to wear blackface. I don't understand why some people who wear blackface are still Governor of uh, Virginia, uh, the guy, uh, what's her name on The View, uh, Prime Minister of Canada. I don't get it, but be it as it may, we're going to go after Sue Schaefer. Uh, Prince, a young woman who's over six feet tall at a D.C. Halloween party hosted by a liberal newspaper cartoonist felt unsafe because this middle-aged woman was wearing blackface. Yeah, look, I'm not saying being unsafe. I, look, I guarantee you the vast majority of these people are white. I'm sure Prince felt, yeah, look, I get it. I, I can literally see why she would feel uncomfortable for sure. Um, uh, this uh, unsafe BS, this is social justice warrior Kant. And Rod says, I first heard this myself at a table in uh, Adams Morgan in 1994 when I was having lunch with three liberal female friends, all of us in our 20s at that point. One of them, seeing me cross myself before eating, asked if I was Catholic. Yes, I said. She asked if I was pro-life. Yes, I said. They all cut loose on me. One of the women, someone I had only met that morning, began trembling and said that she felt unsafe in the presence of someone who held my beliefs. And now this lady is probably an op-ed, some person in D.C. or Madison Ave or something like that or in Hollywood as a, as a middle-aged person. This is what happened when the cancel culture and the wokeness of college is now uh, in mainstream the world. It's crazy. 
Anyway, there was a scene at this party. Three witnesses described Gruber as yelling at Schaefer. Gruber's a Puerto Rican lady. Schaefer's a white lady. And Gruber said, there wasn't a single person in that party who didn't hear me when I spoke and when they left the party immediately. More. Schaefer said her confrontation, she, after the confrontation, she walked to the next room, tried dancing, it just didn't feel right, so I drove home. The next day, Schaefer, Schaefer says she wrote an email to Tolls, a liberal uh, baby boomer a cartoonist, to apologize. She said she hadn't meant harm, but she had made a terrible mistake. And on her Facebook page, Schaefer posts often about her opposition to Trumpster, her support of immigrants, gun control, gays, anti-racism causes, including photos she took at marches and demonstrations. And she says she spent many hours in therapy talking about how, how carelessly I believe I behaved. She showed ashamed. This activist, white liberal, spent hours in therapy because she made a dumb, offensive joke that intended to be making fun of someone she considered racist. But that was taken as racist. Sounds like she's extremely remorseful. You might be wondering why she didn't just call Gruber and Prince to apologize. It might have been something to do with the fact that they didn't know uh, who Tom Tolles was. They didn't know each other. They came to the party as strangers. Schaefer wasn't the only one in therapy. Prince has sought to work through the events of the evening with a therapist herself. <sighs> I think we know one line of work to go into is being a therapist with for liberals. You, man, you'll be forever in demand. Uh, nearly two years later, in the light of the Black Lives Matter moment, Gruber saw her chance. She contacted Tolles, the party host, whom she did not know, and demanded that he participate in the public humiliation of his friend. Gruber felt compelled to re re revive the 2018 incident. Uh, last week, she emailed Tolles, who she was never met. She never met this guy. And she said, in 2018, I attended a Halloween party at your home. I understand that you're not responsible for the behavior of your guests, but at the party, a woman was in blackface. She harassed me and my friend, the only two women of color, and it was clear she made the costume with a racist intent. Gruber, a 27-year-old management consultant, told Tolles that the incident had weighed heavily on my heart is abhorrent and egregious. She asked Tom Tolles to help identify the woman. Because he's actually a human being, even though he's liberal, uh, Tolles was reluctant to identify Schaefer to this perfect stranger who meant to do her harm. Then Gruber, a consultant at Accenture, old Arthur Anderson, isn't it odd how she's working at uh, Arthur Anderson? Huh, interesting, because Arthur Anderson was evil back in the, eight, in the late 90s and 20s, in the beginning of the 20s. But then she put out the progressive big guns. But Tolls did not give Gruber the woman's name, and Gruber reacted sharply, saying hiding her name is a deliberate act of white privilege and cowardship, not cowardice, not friendship. Denounce your friends or else. Tolls offered to bring the parties together so Schaefer could apologize, but Gruber was not having it. Gruber, oh yeah, Jonathan Gruber from the uh, MIT, who the fake, the, Amer the stupidity of the American people. We want to get, I'm, they're, I'm sure they're not related. Uh, after he uh, cheated Vermont out of, what, $500,000, Jonathan Gruber, uh, he, he was the architect of Obamacare. They're all fakers, man. Uh, she told Tolles, Tolles that he was not innocent in the conflict. This is Gruber now. As you'd well know, we are now the extension of the company we keep. So if you keep company with someone who wore blackface, you are inherently racist yourself. Denounce your friends or stand accused of being complicit with racism. With moral, Gruber's moral blackmail hanging over everybody's head, the Post began working on a story. And on Wednesday, after Schaefer informed her employer, a government contractor, contractor about the blackface in the Post's coming article, she was fired. She was fired. <laughs> uh, my first thought, this is going back to Rod, was that this is real bonfires of the vanities moment in which Washington liberals destroy each other. Ha ha, you fools, you made this yourselves. Enjoy living it. But then I thought about these vicious women, Gruber and Prince, destroy this foolish woman's life. She's 54 years old and has been publicly humiliated over a bad joke and loses her job. She'll be lucky to work in that town again. And Gruber refused the opportunity for Schaefer to express her remorse personally and in fact compelled Tolls to participate in the denunciation of his friend. In the Washington Post, which ought, to have, which ought to have refused any part of the sleazy Gruber Prince vendetta, dutifully and disgustingly went along. Uh, the Czech writer Milan Kundera's first novel, The Joke, is about Ludwig, a student in the Stalinist era Czechoslovakia who is an enthusiast, enthusiastic commie. Trying to tease a young comrade, he finds it to be too serious about politi politics, he tells a dumb joke making fun of the commie party. 
But then he's quickly denounced. He is sent away to spend years working in a mine with other subversives. And his life is radically changed. And uh, Rod had written a book, Live Not By Lies. Uh, uh, in researching his book, Rod says, I ran across real-life stories like this. The story of Rudolph Dobius, one of the worst. And it's relevant to this D.C. story. Here is Dobius in his house in rural Slovakia telling me of his imprisonment. When he was 20 and Czechoslovakia was still in the grips of high Stalinism, Mr. Dobius was arrested on charges of treason. He belonged to a Catholic scouting organization and was falsely believed to have drawn a cartoon making fun of Stalin and Czech leader Gottwald, both of whom had died by then, but it didn't matter. He was sentenced to 18 years in prison labor camp and sent to a uranium mine for making fun of Stalin and the deceased Czech commie leader. 18 years. Uh, at 84, he's in bad shape. Here he is right here. Uh, he told us that his body is still in pain. He still, he sat for a 90-minute interview with me for my upcoming book. He insisted in our conversation that in, prison, that in prison he was actually free because he had interior freedom. As young as he was, the older men in prison with him, including a Catholic priest, took him on as a son and encouraged him all the time, telling him that he was on the right path. He credits those men with deepening his faith in God by teaching him how to regard suffering as a means of drawing closer to him. So he's able to get closer to God by looking at suffering as a means to draw closer. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting why the affluent abandon God? The down, though, turn to God. It's almost like somebody said the meek shall inherit the earth. Kind of interesting, huh? Uh, notice that his comfort was made bearable because it had, his discomfort was made bearable because it had meaning. That, and it was shared by all. Like everyone I've interviewed from the underground church on the trip, Dobius emphasized how indispensable it is to have close friends when you're persecuted. After his release from the mines, he struggled to find work. Being a former political prisoner and all, he ended up as a miner, having to live away from home for long stretches. Remember, he just did this for writing a, telling a joke about commies. Even his children suffered. His little boy was not allowed to attend kindergarten because his father had been an enemy of the state. Mr. Dobius began writing successful children's literature in the 70s, but it wasn't until after the commies fell that he was allowed to turn writing literature for adults. Now he's considered one of the country's greatest writers. He wasn't even guilty of the joke. They just turned him in. They turned on him, which is exactly what the left does. They turn on you to advance their own cause. I mean, the most greedy, uh, not just narcissistic, but just the greediest people there are, people on the left, they will slight, they'll slash you off they will send you the uranium nine to get themselves to advance it's crazy now sue schaefer is not being sent to the uranium mines but she will never be the same because of her stupid mistake because of the toxic twins like Gre gruber and prince and the monsters who run the washington post an exquisite irony five days before halloween 2018 megan kelly actually lost her job for being for having been perceived as minimizing blackface she didn't even have it. She is perceived as minimizing. Schaefer, a liberal activist, put on blackface to Ma Kelly, who had been ruined professionally, not for wearing blackface, mind you, but for seeking to minimize his offensiveness. This is the world that progressives and their institutions like the Washington Post have created for us all. And if you think it's only going to correct uh, affect them, you're wrong, very wrong. The totalitarians are making it impossible to have a normal society. So let's read this. This is a passage by Rob's book, which I'll have to get. Camilla, Camilla Badova sits in her armchair in the Prague apartment where she and her late husband, uh, Vaclav, used to hold underground seminars to build up the anti-commie dissident movement. It's been 30 years since the fall of commies, but Badova is not about to lessen her vigilance. I mentioned to her that tens of millions of Americans have installed in their houses so-called smart speakers that monitor conversations for the sake of making domestic life more convenient. Camilla visibly recoils. The appalled look on her face telegraphs a clear message. How can Americans be so gullible? To stay free to speak the truth, she tells me, you have to create a self, a, uh, create for yourself a zone of privacy that is invalid. She reminded me that the secret police had bugged her apartment and that she and her family had to live with a constant awareness that the government was listening to every sound they made. The idea that anyone would welcome to their home a commercial device that recorded conversations and transmits them to a third party is horrifying. No cons consumer convenience is worth the risk. Uh, Camille and her son Patrick showed me their phones that night. They're not smartphones. The Bendas uh, believe it's too risky to have phones connected to the Internet. 
I thought that night that they were really scarred by their experiences under communism and maybe too paranoid. I don't think that anymore. A couple of days ago, I interviewed an American source who works for the Democratic Party on the subject of cancel culture. He would only speak to me through the encryption service and warn me strongly that's far too risky to communicate otherwise. If he had said that to me just a few months ago, I would have thought him paranoid. Not anymore. Researching the books, going back to Rob, I learned that people living under the commies had to be extremely careful about their social lives. You never knew who might be informer. Imagine how that deforms society. In Budapest, a young Hungarian told me that Hungarian society has never recovered from the damage of the aspect of communism. Again, we do not have gulags here, nor do we have secret police, but we are creating something similar. You now have to be extremely careful about your social circles. It ought to be obvious to Sue Schaefer that you don't put on black face in any context in this day and age. She made a mistake that she'd be paying for for years to come. But what if Schaefer had gotten a conversation at the Tolls party with these two and had minimized blackface? Uh, let's see. Would that? What if they had gotten to a shouting mount over it? And what if two years on, Lexi Gruber decided to telephone Tom Tolls to threaten to tar him for being racist, for being friends with a woman who at his party defended a media figure who lost her job from minimizing blackface? Do you just think the story would have ended up any different? No. Here's the thing. It is fat. Oh, Jimmy. Uh, what's that guy? Jimmy Kimmel. Blackface, too. Can't forget him. Jimmy Kimmel. Why is he still around? So we got Jimmy Kimmel, Justin Trudeau, Ralph Northam, and uh, the lady from The View. Whatever that lady's name is. The weird uh, Joy something. Uh, Behar? Behar? Oh, just not a good person. Is fast becoming too risky to socialize pe- with people that you don't know and trust? How can you be sure that a joke you tell or an opinion you offer... Uh, Within uh, of saying something that will be within the hearing of an SWA person like Lexi Gruber won't be used against you in the fu- in the future. You can't be. You think a heartfelt personal apology will save you from ruin? Not with toxic SW days like Gruber and Prince on the prowl. People are going to have to withdraw from spending time socially with those that cannot be trusted. So I'm telling you, it's on the left. I tell you, man, the left of the old days is gone. Don't trust these people. This is what it means to live in a soft totalitarian society. The government has nothing to do with it. The secret police didn't come for Sue Schaefer. Two merciless woke young women did. We are doing it to ourselves. Correction, we are not doing it to ourselves. Liberals and progressives are, abated by disgraceful media. I've always thought Donald Trump was outrageous, even even dangerously authoritarian, to call the media the enemy of the people. Now, not so much. Read that post story here is a kind of obituary for free society. Man, what a, I, dude, I, uh, I've just, look, I've been following Rob for a while. I just brief, recently started coming as must read. This guy is the best writer out there that I can see. Uh, one of the best. You know, my man, Sundance over the conservative treehouse, Powerline blog. Um, but this guy's just incredible. It's good stuff, man. I'm sad. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I think you got to, anyone who's on the left, I think you got to say, you know, at the end of the day, if you are in that circle, I would be highly suspect of, uh, of being there because they, they, they don't care about you, man. Um, you're not Jimmy Kimmel. You're not Joy Behar. You're not Ralph Northam and you're not uh, Justin Trudeau because you have no power. They're going after the powerless. This is what bullies do. They go after the powerless. They don't go after the powerful because they want power themselves and they can uh, jump on with the bandwagon of the powerful. Uh, that's what they do. But they do go after the powerless, which is why Sue Schaefer has lost her job. Stuff like this times make you say, we got to unionize again. Notice when the decline of unions has been, actually, I got to do it. That's, I think the decline of unions is what has caused this. You got to look further into that. All right, we'll see you. Love to hear your thoughts.